SSD 980 or the SSD 980 Pro? Which one's for you? So Samsung do these two different types of NVMe drives. You've got your standard SSD 980, and then you've got the 980 Pro, which it's in the name, is professional. Well, no, it's just faster. It uses PCIe 4, and uh, according to their specs, has a read speed of 7,000 megabytes per second and 3,500. Now, these speeds are only achievable if you've got this actually kind of hardwired into a proper PCIe 4 uh, sort of um, socket. Whereas I am looking at these from a uh, an NVMe enclosure. So to use as an external drive plugged into a Thunderbolt 3 or 4 port or alternatively a USB 4 port. And the way I'm going to do that is by using this. So this is the Acasis, I'm going to call it, the USB 4 NVMe M2 SSD enclosure. And I've used one of these for months and months now. This is another one that I've bought just so I basically so I can uh, have two because they're extremely useful. And um, so, uh, honestly, these are brilliant. I would highly recommend these. I'll put links to these in the, in the description. But this is totally capable of achieving the maximum speeds. Well, let's talk about that for a second because if you look at the Thunderbolt 3 and uh, 4 spec, you actually figure out that a single data channel, so if you connect this to Thunderbolt, you think, oh, 40 gigabits per second. Well, that's not true at all, because Thunderbolt can't actually do 40, bits, 40 gigabits per second of data, of just pure data. It has sort of display port data split and things like that. So the actual maximum data you can get, at least as far as I can tell from this spec sheet, is 22 gigabits per second, which is about 2,750 megabytes per second. That is a decent speed. You can't deny that that's decent. But can this actually do 2,750 megabytes per second? And theoretically, each of these should achieve that, right? Because they can both do three, well, one can do 7,000 and the other one can do 3,500. So surely both of those should be able to do 2,750. Well, let's take a look. This is the Acasis enclosure. This is what it looks like. Get an idea, good idea of size here. This is the one I've been using for ages. It comes with a, a cable, a reasonable well, standard length, actually, pretty much a standard length Thunderbolt cable. Really nice, has a really nice way of opening, actually. Just It's got a kind of little ball bearing in here that just kind of pops, means you can just pop it open like that. So you've got these little ball bearings. A really nice way of opening. The drive just mounts inside really simply. You just put a little rubber thing here to hold it in place and it just pushes in. And then on the actual case here, on the actual top of the case, you just put a bit of heat sink, heat sink compound, the stuff that comes with it, it comes with a uh, sticker to let you put that on. And uh, dead easy to fit. So let's get into this one and do the same. I'm gonna fit the theoretically slower one in. There we go. There's the uh, there's the cable that it comes with, and here are the uh, two little the couple of heat sink pads they provide with it, and in there you've just got the uh, the rubber thing as well to, that holds holds it down. So uh, pretty straightforward, not much to it. But I just want to say it does work remarkably well. I was well impressed. Yeah, I thought I've never heard of this brand and all this. I don't know what this brand is, but it's nicely made, all metallic, and uh, just just dead straightforward, and it just kind of works. Just slot in here like this. So sometimes this will be done with a screw, but you just need to fit the rubber thing over the end like that. And as it goes down and in, secure it. And that is that. You can see the drive is just slightly off center. It's not exactly the same distance, not sort of equidistant between these two sides. So that's sort of dictates where you want to put the heat sink. Just put it slightly higher up. And that means that when it's um, when you fit the actual bottom on like this, I won't put it on the right way. That would help. It's going to come in proper contact with the drive then. So now clip it shut, and that should be sufficient. That's a little bit more wobbly than my other one, actually. Yeah, not quite as not quite as secure. That maybe uh, I know the reason why. I know it's because you're supposed to put two, both these heat sinks on provides that extra bit of padding. So if I put these on top of each other, like this, 
now I have the right amount of spacing. There we are. Yeah, that's better. That's nice and secure now. As is usual in these situations, I'm using the Blackmagic Design Disk Speed Test. It's a commonly used application. Different speed testers do give diff slightly different results, but we'll use this as a control and we'll just kind of see what this one says. So first, first things first, I've got the, the 980 at the moment, the SSD 980 plugged into its own dedicated Thunderbolt port on my uh, MacBook Pro. So it has all the bandwidth available that a Thunderbolt port could provide which as we've discussed just before is a maximum of kind of 22 gigabits per second and i'm going to select my drive here and you can see i've got the drive there let's just open that up and start the test Okay, so I'm getting 1,930 megabytes right and only 1,600 megabytes per second read. Interesting. I would have thought that would be the other way around, actually. So about 1,600. Okay, let's stop that. And I'm going to switch the drive out now. So I'm going to eject this drive and plug in my other one. And now I have a different target drive in here. I'm going to select my this my drive here. This one's actually got stuff on, but it is only half full, so it shouldn't affect speed in any way. And let's give this a go. <laughs> Good grief. Oh, wow. Okay. So exactly the same port, exactly the same enclosure. We've got exactly the same potential bandwidth of 22 gigabits per second, which is, uh, as I mentioned, 2,750 megabytes per second. And it looks like write and read are basically maxing that out. If I just go to the right here, 2,781, that is impressive. On the right side, we're talking about oh, what, how much? 800 megabytes per second faster on the SSD 980 Pro and on read we're talking about one gigabyte per second faster so one thousand just over 1000 megabytes per second faster read speed on that card using this particular setup so really quite surprising so as you can see this can do the job it doesn't have any problem with it uh, however there is a huge huge difference between those two cards more expensive for the Pro there, 980 Pro, probably kind of, uh, I think for one terabyte, as, as I mentioned, I think the RRP is about 175, and the other one comes in maybe at about 115. That was the price I checked. But the problem with flash memory is the price changes all the time, so it's hard for me to give you an accurate price in a pre-recorded video. However, the speed difference is phenomenal. I mean, for many people, 1,600 megabytes per second. We're not talking about megabits now. They're 1.6 gigabytes per second of transfer is probably going to be sufficient. But let's be honest, if you add the extra cost and get the 980 Pro and use an enclosure like this, you are achieving the maximum data rate you can get on a Thunderbolt connection with about 2,700, between 2,700 and 2,800. So more than a gigabyte per second more than the 980. I was absolutely blown away by that. Like, it's really surprised, particularly because they both say that they should be able to do, well, one does 3,500 and the other one does 7,000. So plenty of headroom there above that 2,750 figure. Who knows? Anyway, thought I'd just like to, uh, sh I thought I'd just uh, share that with you. And uh, you can make whichever purchasing choice you wish. I'll put uh, links in the description as always. If you'd like to support the channel, please use those to go to Amazon in your country, wherever you're watching. But thanks very much, and I will see you again soon.